In this video, we continue working on the proof of the third isomorphism theorem for rings. I want to remind you of where we are at. Our basic strategy is that we want to find a ring homomorphism pi from R to the target ring of R mod I modded out by S mod I. And basically, we want the homomorphism to be onto, and we want the kernel of pi to be equal to s. Because if we have these three things satisfied, then the first isomorphism theorem says that r mod the kernel of i of r mod the kernel of pi, in other words, r mod s is isomorphic to the target ring, which is r mod i modded by s mod i. And that's what we want. In the previous video, we defined the map pi of r to be r plus i plus s mod i, which is a typical element of r mod i modded by s mod i. And this definition was for all r inside the ring r. This element is in R mod I, and so that makes this element inside our target ring of R mod I modded out by the ideal S mod I. In the last video, we did show that pi is a ring homomorphism from R to the target ring R mod I modded by S mod I. So now what we have to do is show that pi is onto, and we need to look at the kernel of pi. Showing that pi is onto is actually quite easy. So let's show pi is onto. So we take a typical element in our target ring, which is R mod I modded by S mod I. And that typical element looks like this. Well, we have to have some um, element of R mod I, that would be R plus I, and then we add the ideal S mod I. Now, we know for this typical element that r is indeed in the ring r. So if we look at pi of r, then by definition that will be r plus i plus s mod i, and hence pi is indeed onto our target ring of r mod i modded by s mod i. So the onto part is not a problem. The final piece of the proof is to find the kernel of pi. So we now need to show that the kernel of pi is actually equal to the ideal s. Now this is going to actually require a couple of things from a couple of videos ago, and I'll try and remind you of them as we are going to be looking at them. We will do a double inclusion proof. And what that means is that we will first of all show that the kernel of pi is indeed a subset of S. And here is how we're going to do that. Let's let X be any element of the kernel of pi then what do I know? I know that pi of x has to be the zero element in the target ring. I also know that pi of x has to be x plus i plus s mod i by the definition of pi. And this is since x is inside the kernel. Now, I need to think about what the zero element inside my target ring is, and we've talked about this in previous videos. The zero element of our target ring 
is going to be equal to the following. It's equal to the zero in R mod I plus the ideal S mod I. Well, the zero in R mod I is nothing more than zero in R plus I. So zero plus I plus S mod I is equal to the zero element inside my target ring of R mod I modded out by S mod I. So what we now know is this, x inside the kernel of pi implies the following. It implies that x plus i plus s mod i has to be equal to 0 in r plus i plus s mod i. Now back in video 67.1, we were looking at the elements of our target ring R mod I uh, modded out by S mod I, and we know from video 67.1 that these two cosets are equal if and only if the following holds. So we know that X plus I plus S mod I is equal to zero plus I plus S mod I, if and only if X minus the zero element is part of S. And of course, X minus the zero is just X. So that happens if and only if X itself is inside S. So what we now have is that X inside the kernel of pi does indeed imply that x is inside s. So what we have is that the kernel of pi is indeed a subset of s. To do the inclusion the other way is very similar. So let's look at that. In other words, we're now going to show that s is a subset of the kernel of pi. So we're going to let little s be inside set s. We need to show that pi of s is the zero element in the target ring. And the target ring is r mod i modded by s mod i. And that zero element, remember, is zero plus i plus s mod i. So we need to show that pi of s is equal to this particular coset inside our target quotient ring. But we also know this. Pi of s has to be s plus i plus s mod i. Now this is a capital S and this is a little s because recall little s is an element of capital S. And so now look at this. We have the following basic idea. S is inside capital S so that implies that S minus the zero inside ring R is part of capital S, and that implies that S plus I plus S minus, S plus I plus S mod I is equal to zero plus I plus S mod I, and that last thing is by stuff in video 67.1, which was where we looked at the elements inside the ring R mod I modded out by S, pi, S mod I. So what we now have is the kernel of pi is indeed equal to S. We know that 
pi is onto r mod i mod s mod i, and we know that pi is a ring homomorphism from r to r mod i modded out by s mod i. So the first isomorphism theorem says r mod the kernel of pi, in other words, r mod s, is isomorphic to the target ring, which is r mod i modded by s mod i, and that completes the proof of the third isomorphism theorem for rings.